Hello, my name is Fiona Parker and welcome to our follow-up drawing session, um, following on from our story time session where we read The Gruffalo's Child. Today we're going to be drawing a slivery snake. So, if you have your paper and your pencils and your pens at the ready, we will get started. So I'm going to start with the head and I'm going to put in the top of the head and the mouth area like that. Then the secret to drawing a snake is to do very fluid lines. So from the top of the head, we're going to take a line and just sweep it round like that. Then we're going to come back to where we left off on this side and we're going to do a, an echo of the line that we've already drawn in. And then we will come back to this side and we will take it round like that and then we can just finish off this section like so and there we have a snake shape right so once we have the main shape of our snake in we can then start to add in the details so we will put in the eye to begin with a lovely big eye which I will colour in black for this demonstration but you can colour it in any colour you would like to once you're doing this at home. We will put in a, a little line that kind of comes around the mouth like that and then we can put in the lovely long tongue that comes out of his mouth like that. And then what we want to do so that we can what makes it easy for when you're adding your decoration to the snake is putting some defining lines to give you an idea of how the snake is twisting. So we will put in a line here, a line like that, and just follow that general um, shape round. If you want to turn your paper as you go, that's fine. Just keep doing it like this. So it helps you to understand, well actually what we'll do is we'll come back to here and then because it's twisting this way now, we're going to change the direction of that line so that it goes like this. And then again, you can bring it around like that and then you can almost start to change its set. There we go. So we have, we've put in some kind of defining lines that create that idea that it's twisting and turning and then we can then put in even more um, decoration and detail to the snake. So we'll put in a little nostril there. What I didn't put in but I want to put in is a little fang. Oh yes and then we're going to start putting in some defining markings onto our snake and I'm going to put in some zigzags Again, you can put in any shape that you want to, but for the sake of today, I'm going to do a very simple um, triangle form that goes around the skin of the snake. And I'm just going to twist my paper as I go to keep that continuation going. And I'll bring the paper back round to this side, carry it on from here, like that. And as it's getting closer to you, you can make the triangle slightly larger. And as the, as the triangles are getting further away from you, you can make them slightly smaller. So now as we're coming to the tip of the tail, we can start to make these triangles much closer together. There we are. So there is our main snake shape all in and done. And then what we will do is we'll put our slivery snake into his setting. Now our snake lived in a log pile house in the story of the Gruffalo and in the Gruffalo's child as well. So we think we will have to put in a log pile house or at least start of a log pile house. 
So I'm going to come up. Well, first of all, I think what I'm going to do, because at the moment he looks like he's just suspended in thin air, I just want to put him into um, the, the ground so he looks like he's actually on the ground. So I'm just going to kind of root him to the spot a bit by putting in some suggestion of grass at the base of our snake. And we will also do what we've done in quite a few of our other drawings, which is to put in a little bit of shadow at the point where he's on the ground, just so that it gives the impression that he is on the ground. Like that. And just do that. Now he, there we go. Like that. I might maybe just put a bit more over here as well. Right, okay. And then we'll just put in a few more bits of grass and let's get this log pile house into our picture. So we're going to do the, um, the a circle, which is like the end of a cut off piece of tree trunk. And we will do our dots and circles that go around like this looking like a tree and we'll do some little lines that come in at a different angle just to give the idea that this is the end of, of the bark of tree and then we will put in a line that goes across like this and down on the other side and across like that and then we'll do our other trick that I've shown you do, to do quite a few times now, which is to do your lines like this. And again, just put a few going in the opposite direction. So that's one of our logs. We need to get an, a couple more in, I think. So we'll do another one here, like so. And again, the circles that go around. that and we'll put in our line and our lines are going along again like that and I think we'll put in another one like that and that can go across like that. There we go. Now again I'm just drawing quite quick with this today to demonstrate how to make up the picture you obviously can take as long as you want to when you're doing this at home. We'll put in some grass up here, like that. Now we're also going to put in some rocks. So where this grass has been drawn here, I think I'm going to put a rock coming up over here like this. And then I'm going to add the base of the rock like that. And then what we can do is we can put in another rock over here like that. And as we did in our previous picture, very quick lines up and down to uh, suggest that that is grass growing at the base of the rock. Now we're going to put in a few little small pebbles and rocks here as well. In a little bit of shadow at the base of these as well. And a couple more. And a bit more shadow at the base of those. Okay, and then we're going to put in a couple of toadstools into our picture this time. So these are quite fun shapes to draw. So they're almost like a very short and squat tree trunk, but then with a lovely kind of circle on the top and then put in some circles like this. And once these are coloured in red and white, so the dots are white and the main colour is bright red and you've put brown stalks on they look really effective 
And we're going to draw another one at a slightly different angle. So there we have our kind of tree trunky shape. But then we're going to do a shape like this, almost like a fat. And we'll do some lines that go like this. And then, because that's suggesting the underside of our mushroom. And there we go. Now these, if you were to see these kind of mushrooms out in the woods, do not eat them because they're probably very poisonous. Especially if they're bright red with white spots on them. Okay, so there we have a couple of little mushroomy things in. Put a bit more grass in at the very base of our picture so that to anybody looking at it, you can imagine that the scene is continuing off the page. And then I think into the background, we will put um, some suggestion of trees in the background. Bring them through that shape there. In the back, in sort of in the distance, we have these trees. And we're just going to do some very light, because we don't want this background to over dominate the snake in the middle of the picture so we're just having to keep them very light and then i think that would be all ready for you to go on and color in your snake now i have done one already just to show you what he looks like, I've made mine two tones of green, but again, you can make yours any colour that you want to. Uh, there's the mushrooms all coloured in, the rock, um, lovely red ta um, tail, lovely red tongue coming out of his mouth. Um, another idea that you might want to do, because in um, the Gruffalo's Child, our clever little mouse outfoxed the Gruffalo's Child by using his shadow to create an image of something much bigger than it really was. So I had a little go playing with that idea and this is another one that I did using the shadow of my hand um, when there's a light on it. So that's something else you might want to have a go at. So that literally was my hand like this and then the shadow that was created onto the page, I literally just outlined that shadow and then from there you can go on and build up your picture. So there's a couple of ideas that you could have a go at this week at home and I hope you enjoy doing that one and I will see you again in my next video. Thank you very much for joining me. Take care. Bye bye.